Right now at 7, a political outsider with big pockets jumps into the race for mayor of San Francisco. Why he thinks the city's leaders are falling short. I think we're capable of so much and uh, we're not living up to the expectations that we all have for our city. But others say that lack of political experience is the wrong fit for the city. It's definitely going to be a fight. It won't be easy. Meantime, the current mayor proposes a controversial plan requiring drug screenings for benefits, and it's already getting plenty of pushback. I mean, we're going to drug test 5,000 welfare recipients instead of going after 500 drug dealers that are up the street. Plus, why Target is closing a few stores across the Bay Area, the two East Bay cities losing their only locations. And later on, swimming back from Alcatraz is impressive enough, but we'll introduce you to the 78-year-old retired businessman who's done it 100 times all for a good cause. This is CBS News Bay Area with Juliet Goodrich. Good evening. It might be hard to believe, but the next general election is only 13 months away, and a major local race is already heating up. We're talking about the race for mayor of San Francisco. As of today, 29 candidates have filed paperwork to run. That includes the incumbent mayor, London Breed, who is running for her second full term. She's held the office since 2018, and that is when she won a special election following the death of former mayor Ed Lee. In May, Breed got her first major challenger, Supervisor Asha Safai, whose district includes neighborhoods like Ingleside, Excelsior, and the Outer Mission. But today, another big name officially threw his hat in the ring. You might know him as a local philanthropist or as heir to the Levi Strauss fortune. Jose Martinez takes a look inside Daniel Lurie's campaign announcement and the early response. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this city, well, that was a big topic of discussion today here in Potrero Hill, where Daniel Lurie officially announced his candidacy for mayor of San Francisco. A view like no other, playing host to an event in Potrero Hill. Daniel Lurie declaring his candidacy for mayor of San Francisco. What do you think when you look at this view? I think we're capable of so much and uh, we're not living up to the expectations that we all have for our city. Lurie's announcement drew a crowd of friends, family, supporters and curious voters like Delta Medina, a longtime San Francisco resident, mother of one, and a political and community activist in the mission. I think at this moment in time, it's important to have a democratic process that actually brings new ideas to the table. Um, the city is really struggling and we're all feeling that struggle. This is a city that a lot of people love, um, that actually has a lot of wealth. There's not a lack of money, there is a lack of political will. And it will be interesting to see, to have a, a real contender in the race. I mean, he says he's going to fully staff the police department. But not everyone wants to give him a chance based on his lack of public office experience. Connor Johnston, born and raised in San Francisco, father of two, and the owner of a cannabis store, tells me he will keep supporting Mayor London Breed. This candidate has no political or demonstrable leadership experience. and. This is a major city that faces major issues and we need an actual leader with the proven capacity to get things done. But Lurie, who is the founder of the anti-poverty nonprofit Tipping Point and an heir to the Levi Strauss fortune, tells me he knows exactly what those things are and he's ready to tackle them. It's about public safety, it's about cleaning our streets, it's about having that pride again in our city. I mean, we, we saw a conference come here last week and we were able to clean up the streets for a few days. If we can do it for three days, why, we can't, why can't we do it year round? And the answer is we can't. Uh, we just haven't had the political will. And those concerning issues are the ones where both Delta and Connor agree. Safety, security, economic opportunity, and education. As someone that grew up in the city and is raising a kid in the city, it's really important for me that when we walk out the door, we feel comfortable and safe. As San Franciscans, we often get wrapped up in this bubble thinking that everything we do is either the best or the worst. We're either the, we're either the best at something or this is the worst it's ever been anywhere. And the reality is these are issues that cities all up and down the West Coast are facing. And there's a lot of hurdles to overcoming those issues. A lot of those are state policies or federal policies or a lack of federal support. And it is really frustrating. And Mayor Breed is frustrated by it. 
Uh, but we've got to stay in the fight, and we need a proven leader to actually get these things done. And Lori tells me he will continue holding events like this one to keep the conversation going with everyone in the city. In addition to his charity work, Lori also chaired the host committee that brought Super Bowl 50 to Levi Stadium. But some events surrounding that Super Bowl also left San Francisco taxpayers with a multi-million dollar bill. So the current mayor's latest action is certainly drumming up a lot of conversation. London Breed is pushing to require drug screenings and treatment for people seeking cash assistance from the county. This would apply specifically to the homeless and formerly homeless, receiving between $700 and $800 from SF's general assistance program that can legally be tied to drug treatment. At the current pace, the city is on track to record 850 overdose deaths just this year. The mayor says most of the people on the street who need help refuse it, so extra action is needed. But no more anything goes without accountability. And last week alone, 80 people were contacted and touched out on the streets, asked if they wanted services, provided treatment on demand, and only one agreed. She insists that San Francisco has the bandwidth to do the testing and provide the treatment, but critics see it differently. And some strong opposition is coming from the Board of Supervisors, which has to approve the plan for it to go through. I mean, we're going to drug test 5,000 welfare recipients instead of going after 500 drug dealers that are up the street? We need serious ideas. We need serious actions, not a political gimmick. The mayor has asked the public to put pressure on the Board of Supervisors to support the plan. So we mentioned San Francisco Supervisor Safai is also running for mayor in 2024. And today, he introduced a measure calling for increased foot and bike patrols throughout the entire city. What he's doing is urging SFPD to roll out a strategy that includes more officers on the ground to address and prevent crime. Now, he says there's simply not enough patrolling on foot in the city. The point is, is that it's not happening evenly. It's not happening in every corner of the city. It's not happening... Uh, on a consistent basis. And that's the difference in the proposal that we have today. Regardless of whether he wins the mayoral race, he will be off the Board of Supervisors in 2025 because he is termed out. Crime, specifically retail theft, is the reason Target cited for abandoning three Bay Area stores, including one in San Francisco's Soma District. The other locations are in Oakland and Pittsburgh. Target is also closing stores in Portland. Seattle and New York for the same stated reason, the threatened safety of workers and customers. We spoke to a shopper in Pittsburgh who said she relies on that location. There's nothing else in the area. Yeah, that sucks. We come here a lot. <laughs> so like right now we're coming for last minute school supplies that are needed for a project and the only other store is like a Dollar Tree and we don't always feel safe going to the Dollar Tree. So yeah. that's awful. The closures are all effective October 21st. Thieves, they've been targeting catalytic converters for years. Nothing new, but today drivers from all over the Bay Area brought their cars to Livermore to have their catalytic converter etched with a unique ID number. So here's how it works. It's to make them easier to trace if stolen. The etching event was completely free for those who showed up and was hosted by the Livermore Police Department. Almost all Americans throughout most of the country are completely dependent upon their car for their livelihood. And when someone's catalytic converter is stolen, if they can't get one because there's a supply chain problem and they just they can't drive their car, it doesn't, and not everyone's got the means and the ability to replace their cars. In 2021, California accounted for nearly 40% of all catalytic converter thefts in the country. Still to come, it's hard enough swimming to shore from Alcatraz, but a retired local businessman is really making it look easy a hundred times over. Beautiful. I'm ready to escape. Look at that, his major milestone, barely a decade after first stepping in the icy bay waters. <laughs> no, <you don't. laughs> oh my, plus not your everyday police chase. Chase, that is how a rookie cop managed to capture this feathered suspect. Beautiful weather across the Bay Area today after some light rain last night, but a beautiful sunset as we look towards the Golden Gate. Temperatures today very close to where they're supposed to be this time of year. We'll keep it going a couple more days, but some changes late this week. Details on those coming up in the first alert forecast.